Good morning, folks, and welcome to a mini mixed media tutorial. Um, Jen and Ingle and I have been working on our mixed media moods for close to a year now, and we thought that doing some smaller projects in the off weeks would be a really great way to stay um, in touch with everyone. And it just so happens that right when we decided to do this, iCAD is starting, which is index card a day. And you should definitely check that out because it's kind of a way just to get some smaller art done uh, frequently and kind of just to, to stretch your artist's abilities and do a little bit of art every day um, to keep you doing art, to keep your artist skills moving and growing and, and expanding. And um, the only way to get better at something is to keep doing it. So... I did have some index cards that are already prepped and waiting, so that's what this one is here, and um, I'll have all the links below in the video description as well as on the blog post. I used some masking tape to put down in the background, um, and then now I am using some clear gesso and water with some powdered charcoal. I love this technique. I think it's incredible. I picked it up from Jean Oliver, a class I took from her, and now I have been using this on a ton of, oh, excuse me, on a ton of stuff. It is awesome. I love the effect that it gives me. It's kind of grungy. It's a little bit watercolor-like. I've been playing with it, different, different thicknesses, different amounts of powder versus gesso versus water, and it really is quite a lovely technique. Uh, I also wanted to take a quick moment and say that for our mixed media moods, um, for those of you who might be joining from the iCAD side, Jen and Jen Engel, mixed media Jen and I have been putting these mood boards together to stretch our own artistic ability already. So it's kind of cool now that iCAD has popped up at the same time, and we can kind of um, blend the two together a little bit. It's really exciting, but. But our mixed media moods is really just about us doing high quality videos for our YouTube channel. So we'd love if you join us. Um, if you're new to you know to us, or if you're coming from the iCAD side, and then I already kind of explained iCAD. If you're coming from the mixed media moods side, so our mood boards have six images on them and then we try to kind of keep our projects based on those six images whether it's textures or colors or shapes or even um, specific elements so this very specific iCAD card is based off of the top right image of our mood board which was a typewriter so I'm kind of aiming for blacks and whites and tans and vintage tones as well as text and some numbers, which you'll kind of see later. So I do want to get back to the project real quick before I miss this step. I uh, took a little plastic cup and a Stabilo Marksol pencil, and I scribbled in the bottom of the cup, which the, the Marksol pencil will mark on anything, and as long as it's non-porous, then you can wipe it up. So I scribbled in the bottom of my plastic cup, and then I added a wet paintbrush, and I used that to kind of grungy up a little bit of the white area that was on my card. Not a ton, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me, geez, not a ton, but I just kind of wanted to block some of that out. Now this next section of sort of video, <laughs> I don't end up using it on my project, but I still thought it was kind of cool to leave in, and um, also... I always do things that I don't end up using, and that doesn't mean that I should throw them away because now um, I'll leave that this part sitting on my desk and I might use it for something else. So my idea was to bring back in some of that like really golden yellow from some oh, from some of the other parts in um, the in the mood board, but. Oh, uh, anyways, you'll see. I didn't really like how it turned out. It seemed like the you know, the lace just was really unnatural in this mustard color, and it's at this point I'm not a huge fan of it. But um, like I said, I may use it on a different project. But I've watered down some acrylic some acrylic paint and uh, distressed that lace. And oh my gosh, my fingers were so yellow after this. It was kind of funny. <laughs> but yeah, so there it is. <laughs> it's still kind of funny 
how bad it seems to me. Um, and then I thought, man, it's really yellow. So what if I kind of grungy it up a little bit with the Stabilo Marksol? But then it just kind of, it just looked even grosser. But yeah, I don't even know what I was thinking. But you know what? If we don't try and try again, then we're not going to know. You know, that that's just how it is. So it's no big deal. I set it to the side. Maybe I'll be able to incorporate it into a different project. It's still a really nice piece of vintage lace. It's just this really funky yellow color now. <laughs> it's almost dry here and then we'll move on to something that actually pertains to the index card. <laughs> yeah, not pretty. Did you see I kind of tossed it to the side there? <laughs> All right, so we are back and I still want some of that yellow in there, but because I'm basing this um, iPad off of the typewriter image from our mood board, I didn't want too much yellow. So I'm using the back end of my paintbrush, similar to, well, identical actually, to the way I used it in the, my main project for this month's mood board. For, and it's May. Um, the other project I did was called Tension, and I did it with a white paint, but I really wanted you to see how cool of an effect using the back of that paintbrush can be because it is such a cool tool and it doesn't cost anything extra. You already have the paintbrush, and if you have different paintbrushes with smaller handles and larger handles, then you just have that many more tools at your ready. So you just flip your paintbrush over, dip it in wet paint, and then you can create these really cool dots all over your page. And you can do other things with it too, like you could probably write with the back of your paintbrush, you know, you could create lines or stripes. Just keep in mind that it doesn't hold paint, the paint just rests on it. So there's not a ton of paint in there like there is in a paintbrush, uh, on the other side of a paintbrush in the bristles, but it's still really cool and it's different and it's another way to use your paintbrush. So keep that in mind. I uh, kind of default to those dots quite often and I love them. Um, now I really want to bring in the texty feel from the typewriter. So I have this really cool vintage toned um, or dark, it's, it's a really dark toned vintage piece of paper. And I'm not sure exactly where this one came from. I have a lot a lot of vintage books. So I have like texts and dictionaries and a few other things. And um, this one has a really nice sort of toffee color to it. And I'm going to use some matte, um, some heavy matte medium, some heavy matte gel by Golden. And I've done this before too. Um, I can't find my fluid matte medium right now, which would have been better for this page. So I'm just going to make my own. And I did that by adding a little bit of water to the heavy gel. Now, you do not have to go out and buy heavy gel because that's what I'm using. If you have heavy gel, great. And I definitely suggest that everyone have some heavy gel on hand for other things like bingo cards because they're so thick and heavy. Um, or, you know, a heavier embellishments, things like that. But for this instance, on a different day, um, I may have used fluid matte medium because the paper is thin enough and I'm more collaging in this area. So I just can't find mine. Keep that in mind. Oh, and I brought it up because you could also use like a soft gel if you have one of those. I personally stay away from glossy gels when I'm collaging because I don't want a resist and the matte helps that happen far less than if I were using a glossy gel. So then I just trimmed um, up my collage pieces that were kind of hanging off there and I'm really happy with where this is going. And it's really starting to feel close, close, um, closely inspired by that that image that typewriter image then I'm gonna scrape some gesso and this is kind of my favorite go-to I I like to say that gesso is the great equalizer because when things are still feeling a little scattered or a little um, uncohesive and I don't even know if that's the word I'll, I'll have to 
use my thesaurus and figure out what, what exactly I'm trying to say there, but I guess disconnected. When things are feeling a little bit disconnected, if I just scrape a tiny bit of gesso across the top textures of that piece, then things really start to feel a lot more cohesive and it feels like the project has a lot more continuity. So that's what I did. I just used the back of a palette knife with a very thin layer of gesso and scraped it all the way across the card. And don't forget to heat between your layers or make sure things are dry before you move on because you get a whole different project if you work um, wet mediums to wet mediums. And then the last little bit here, I had this tiny little piece of tape with a tiny little piece of vintage paper that said 17 on it from a set of dictionaries that was gifted to me by my great friend Michelle Lacar. And she's a little bit of a mixed media maven herself. And um, I, t I, I don't even know what I was doing. Like I was using the one of these little dictionaries I was using the cover of it for an arsenal or something like that and all of them had this little piece of tape with a number on the edge and I couldn't throw this little number away. It says 17. It's just one of those things. I couldn't throw it away. So I sewed it onto my project and I stitched around the edge with some black thread. That's it. So thank you both. Um, I say both because I Thank you both groups, ICAD and Our Mixed Media Moods, for joining me today. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of videos coming up. We have a lot of really great stuff happening for Our Mixed Media Moods. And I'm really excited to be joining in the ICAD group. It's a huge group and there's tons of inspiration. So I'll be seeing you all around. Thank you.